Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 369 at scavengerlife.com. So we've been talking about for a while that we've been working on a secret project. Yes. Yeah. There uh, are some times where we're like, we had a lot to do this week, none of which we're going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> So let's just cut to the chase. Uh, it's really not going to be that big of a surprise, surprise to people, yeah. but we bought another property. property. Yep. And we've been working on this for a year now. Working to buy it. Or to buy not it. Not working right. on it. Right. To yeah. buy it. Um, so let's just put the facts out. Uh, so the reason why this is kind of different for us is that we bought a commercial building on our main street in our little small town. Yeah. And it's a mixed... A use building, so it's got an apartment upstairs with a business down downstairs, below, like a, yeah. a retail office space down below. We wanted to do this for a really long time, yeah. even before we bought our last property. So let's talk about, not the bad, but like the nervousness. Yeah. So number one is this is a very public piece of property. It's, it's right, right on, on Main, Main Street. It's almost like where, you know, like... A lot of small towns in America, there's like two main roads that cross. It's an cross, intersection, yeah. And that cross is like where everything happens. And this building is just like a three couple buildings down. Now. So it's right there. You know, it's an old building built in what? The 1928. There you go. Brick yeah. building. Yep. Uh, right on a creek. Like there's this beautiful creek that goes through Which our is town. good and bad. Yep. <laughs> we can talk about that. Uh, it's not... One of the worst buildings on Main Street, you know, like a lot of small towns in America, just, you know, Main Street got hollowed out because, you know, down the road, Walmart built itself and kind of sucked all the businesses over there. Right. The businesses are not. Our Main Street isn't quite so bad, but most buildings on our Main Street haven't really been touched in a long time. A lot of yeah. them haven't even been occupied in a long For time. For years and years. This building has been occupied, but it's still in rough shape. Like, a, a, no one's done a good renovation to this in decades. Yeah, you know? a long time. But it's not like a total... It's job. one of the better buildings yeah. in better shape. Yep. You know, we're. I'm nervous because we seem to do this to ourselves. You know, we get to a place where, like, we're sustainable. Like, we're just making uh, money and we can just stop and just be good and just cruise. Just, like, work and, yeah. But I think we'd like to... <laughs> challenge ourselves and push ourselves and now is the time to do it you yeah know? and so we're kind of putting ourselves out there it's a lot of money you know we bought the place for 150,000 yep which is pretty good if you think of like a commercial building you know yeah it's really but good. we have if everything goes well 12 months of, of renovations you know right like uh there are things we want to do to it to make it better mm -hmm. really upgrade the place mm -hmm. uh we always pay for our renovations in cash so it just means for the next year it's like it's that like money goes to kind that. of that stress of like needing yeah. to make money and fixing it and we're our, our own contractors you know so we're having to solve all the problems of finding the general right contractor right we're we don't do all the work ourselves but we find yeah. the people to do it yeah so there's that stress right but let's talk about the good right this is the kind of thing that keeps me interested you know in life like a new project you know we like design yep we talked about how we're pretty involved in our town and the community so Everyone always complains about our main street, like and nothing's ever happening. There's a nothing there. The buildings are empty. So we just have to put our money where our mouth is. And I mean, yeah. Invest in a building without a promise that we're going to get it all back. We think we will, right. but we need to show people how a building on our main street can really uh, look good, that our town is worth investing in. Right. Uh, I'm excited because it's a new kind of project. We could have just bought another like cabin somewhere and just made another vacation uh, or a rental. But right. instead, we, well, wanted we wanted to do something different. And we also have been talking about buying a building on Main Street for a really long time. But it's difficult because people want really, really high prices. Uh, so when we heard this price, we were like... That's the right price? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where, like, we met the people that own the building and just kind of became friendly uh, with them. Just because we were friendly with Main Street people. And then I heard the guy was like, yeah, we're trying to, you know, sell this thing. And I said, 
can we talk? Yeah, you're like before I want to he buy put this. on the uh, market. We just made a deal uh, with him, and right. But we said we needed a year to gather our money up. And well, also he agreed to it, which is great. So last summer is when we started talking to them, and we were not done with our renovation at the second rental right. vacation rental, and we were like. You know, we said to them, we want this building. We even signed paperwork with them to say, we will buy this building in a year. Which was awesome that they were like, okay. Yeah. That, that they That's were almost unheard of. They, they wanted it to go to someone that they thought would do something good yeah. with the building. Not so, just let it sit. Uh, that was nice. So that was good that that was able to happen in that order. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's super exciting. So there'll be like a rental up above. Yeah, in the apartment. Right on Main Street. And then we'll yeah. have TBD. like TBD. Uh, to be determined. A business on the first floor. Right. But we need to renovate it first before yep. we're like, you know. Yeah, we're going to do it. It needs some work. We're going to do it our way. People are going to say we're spending too much on it. I know they will, but it's yep. like we got to do it our way. And we got to show like... You know the town is worth investing in, like, yeah. And if it looks nice, people will feel good, and you know, yeah. it's gonna be it's it's gonna be good. That's Someone's crazy. like, I just I thought this was an eBay podcast. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay, well, this is something we've been talking about on the uh, forums. You know, we do this. It seems like it's this a cycle. It always comes up. Why do we list our items good till canceled? Why do we promote a list it and forget it strategy with eBay, you know? And right. this is really a good example why. Yeah. For the next 12 months, we're going to be busy working on this building. Yeah. You know, that's going to be our primary uh, focus, right. you know? And so for eBay, this is when our strategy really, like, we reap the benefits. Yeah. We have a large store. Yep. Over 6,000 items. Yep. And we can just allow things to ride. There will be probably some weeks and months where we don't do anything but ship. Right. You know? And strangely, we'll, we're going to probably make a fairly consistent amount of income. You know? It helps that we have helpers, yep. too. I mean... And that's something kind of still relatively a new thing for right. us. You know? So, you know, that part's going to still be happening, uh, most likely. So, you know, we do still have to list stuff. Like, but like you said, there can be times where we're like, okay, we need a break with listing. Stuff's still selling. Yep. I mean, and you're not touching it. You're not ending it. You're not doing sales. You're not doing auctions. You're just like looking at your phone when something sells. And this is, you know, why I'm always like, I love... I'm always interested if anyone else is doing that strategy where they, you know, make their eBay pipeline and then it's kind of just cranking out cash. Right. And then they pick up something else that they enjoy. Right. They run a laundromat. <laughs> they have the food the truck. The food truck. You yeah, know, no, these are. <laughs> they're like an artist. They're, I don't know, they're doing something else kind of a, of a business. And right. that to me is like, why I love selling on eBay is because it gives us that kind of a freedom. I know? mean, eBay also, there is always the question like, oh, if you're making money on your rentals, why do you need to do eBay? eBay is going to pay for this renovation. I think you're the only one that asks that because <laughs> I know we've been talking the past month or so where you're just like, why do we need to do eBay? Yeah. Because we don't really officially need to sell on eBay anymore. We could live just off of our rental income. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't have as much extra cash. but Well, yeah. Uh, but I think the reason is, is because we've created the pipeline. Like, we've put in all this work. The infrastructure's there. Yeah. You know. It, 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 just keep it going. Yeah. You know? It's just, why not keep it going? Like, yeah. basically, eBay covers all of our bills. Right. Covers our mortgages, everything. And then all of our rental income is just the money we can use to invest in now this new business. Right, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it's like, you might as well just keep it going. Yeah. And, you know, it's really up to us if we want to have our helpers step up and do uh, more work. I mean, right. you know, different kinds of work. But it's kind of <laughs> nerve wracking, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. But, you know... It's not, it's funny. It's not like we just jumped into this and we're like, oh, we're buying a building. It's like we knew for an entire year we were planning, planning. Yeah. It, it was just funny. Like once we signed the papers, which is on Friday, 
it just felt so funny. It was like, oh, we actually, we finally own it. Yep. We do own it. That is our building. <laughs> but I will say, this is an example of how our lives work. Everything just takes a lot of time, you know, buying a place. Yeah. It just doesn't happen right away, you know, building that little small a warehouse behind right. our house, they you know. It's like everything out. just takes a long time. Because it takes longer a, than you think. A lot of moving parts that we got to figure out the uh, uh, money. But then, yeah. you know, you get yourself to like another, like a notch. It's and, like you instead know, of a ladder at a corporate right. place, we're like making our own weird, uh, you know, steps going up, you know. Yeah, it just, and we know this from experience, it always takes more time and it takes more money than you initially think, and that's it. Yeah. You know, and if you're ready for it, I was speaking to another person who did a renovation on Main Street, a big renovation to do a restaurant. It, the They turned a house into a restaurant. It's absolutely gorgeous. And she was like, so you have a lot of work to do on that building. And I'm like, yeah, we're super psyched. <laughs> and she was like, I don't know how you could be excited about that. Because yeah. she was so, you know, burnt out from doing that renovation, which I understand. I'm like, yep, I totally get that. But it's just, you know, when you're like, yep, it is like that. Yep. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yep. Like by the end of it, you're like so exhausted and tired. But the benefits in my mind, are much greater than the stress and the... But it's just like with eBay, if you, you know, you go out and you have all this fun scavenging and you bring home these piles of stuff, I mean, you just have to start to take pictures and lists. It's like you just got to get started. You, know, yeah. you can't think anymore about what's going to happen. It's just like it's with this a building. I'm just excited to go in there and start tearing apart the parts we know we're going to redo the yeah. bathroom, you know, there might be a wall that comes down. I don't know. We'll right. see. Yeah. You know, and just, just got to get started, get our hands dirty and just get it started. You yep. Know? Totally. So I think we're really at that point that makes me so excited and scared at the same time, because we are absolutely not business gurus. We are like artists yeah. who are just wanted our time and to have our time, we have to make uh, money and to make uh, money, we start little businesses, and it's just whew, like, will it work? You know, right? Like, are we risking everything? You know, right. I, I don't want to make it too overblown, but those are the feelings that we're going to be going through this next yeah a year. But it's exciting at the same time because we love like new projects, we love new challenges. Yes, we love the idea of trying to improve our little town you know right it's something we talk about yeah all the time literally every single day we talk about that and i think the thing for anyone that runs a business it's about having a lot of short term goals and tasks but they have to be connected to like a long term plan and we talk about it right. a lot i know sometimes it kind of overwhelms you some because i love to talk about the <laughs> long term stuff you know sometimes i just have to be like Right. I don't know. Right. <laughs> you know. But we do have like a long term plan of what we're trying to do. Like, what do we want our lives and everything to be like in 10 years? Right. I mean, we don't have like control over exactly how it'll turn out, but we have to like. Well, it's like you said, I get mean, it, things in motion, you know. It's like with, um, you know, being an artist and making things, you're trying to make something out of nothing. And, you know, you kind of have to like see something in the future to get to that point well to you know? me it's like the big goals the big dreams are the motivation that gets us through all the little tiny things that have to happen like i'm i love this time where i start breaking down everything we have to do where right i have a list a list of lists yeah of like okay we have to fix this we have to fix that i'm gonna call up you know, Joe and he's going to come over and we're going to yeah. do this and we're going to use uh, this kind of material. And I love that. But if I didn't have the big dream of what we're trying to uh, do, I would easily get a lost in them. You know, those kind of little small things get really kind of boring sometimes. And you're like, what are we doing? You well, know? if, if you feel like it's not adding up, uh, if you can't yeah. see like the end, the end result, 
then it feels a little bit hopeless. And again, I think this is just the same way with eBay. You know, I hear people talk about all the time. I've got mounds of stuff. I know I need to start to put stuff up. And then they start doing it, you know, 100 items, 200 items, 300 items. And everyone hits a, a wall where they're like, why am I doing this? This is so boring. You know? Yeah. And if you don't have like a vision of what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. I'm trying to list a thousand items so I can make X amount of dollars a month so I can quit my job so right. I can spend time with uh, my kids. I don't right. know. Because I want to put my kid through college because I want to pay my house off, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. You have to have that big idea. Right. Or it just, it's like I paid my bills and then yeah. what, you know, which I mean, is a great goal anyway just to pay your to bills. to me, but. if I'm going to be any kind of guru here, it's like it doesn't matter about the amount of money you're trying to to make it's about like the specific thing you're trying to accomplish right. so it wouldn't help it to be like we're gonna make a million dollars you know right you're that's like, not so motivation what? for me you yeah know? what are you gonna like, do yeah like i need to know like well what would i do when i have some money you right know? exactly yeah right i mean we've talked about that before <laughs> it's like be a millionaire yeah you're just kind of like what it's something we have figured out and you are really good at is like using money as a tool. What do you want to use the money for? You know, do you just want to pay your bills and then have a bunch of money? Uh, And for us, what's interesting is real estate. And not just real estate anywhere that can do anything. It's like very specific to our area. Yeah, I mean, we're doing this, you know, we're doing this weird experiment. And I I don't talk about it too much because we don't really know exactly how it'll work out. But the idea of using real estate in a small, a rural community to try and improve the place. Right. And uh, And we've seen other examples of that. And we've seen examples of it in cities. Uh, you know, and we've seen examples of it in other rural places and it's interesting to us, yeah. you know, to me, honestly, it feels like an art form. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it is a form of design. Uh, it is like community design or, you know, urban slash rural design. You know, it's, to me, it's, it's part of that way of thinking yeah i mean can we if other people see us willing to invest a money into a place well that most people are like why would you fix something like that up just leave the way it is that spur other people to do the same thing exactly that's that's like it's not it's not development for just like pure profit sake where i see a lot of places like that where they're like just build a bunch of condos or whatever that's like not what we're doing but to be clear and then i think we should because this is getting off into like la la land but i i but money does need to to a matter like we need to make a money oh money does yes no but i'm saying like it's that's not the only right that's not the only reason right you know it's it's an interesting dance trying to deal with your your dream and the money works and numbers right. and right. Yeah, exactly. having enough Balancing that. care about it where you're able, you know, to uh, work through 12 months plus of l- all the little tiny details, you know. Yep. So there you go. It's, uh, there you go. There you go. So this week on eBay, our journey on eBay, I was in Washington, D.C. this week and... I drove by an estate sale. Oh, really? Yep. It was yeah. it was Saturday, and I was doing something else, and I saw the big sign, you know, come here. I was like, oh, I'll stop by there afterwards. So I probably stopped by there maybe 1 or 2 o'clock. And, you know, it's Saturday, so it's the second day, and it was mm-hmm. in a, you know, a nice part of D.C. I mean, yeah. in this day and age, almost every part is pretty nice. Right. Uh, but it was a gigantic house wow. that sat... On a little tiny piece of property. Mm -hmm. And the place was mobbed. Tons of people. It's, I mean, it's, I don't know if this happens in other countries, but it's such an American thing now. Yeah. Someone's dead. Right. Or was put into an old folks home or something. Right. And everything is for sale. And the neighbors, everyone from the area are just like ants going yeah. through everything and you're allowed to go everywhere i love it you, you yeah, can go in the, the bathroom kitchen cabinets the, the bathroom, bathroom cabinets they're like everything's for everything sale. for sale 
takes up off the wall. It almost feels weird the first time right. you go. You're like, am I allowed to buy this? The garden yeah, furniture, everything. the potted plants. I mean, everyone's just mm-hmm. buying everything. Probably because the family's about to sell the house and they yeah. need to get rid of They're everything. like, we took everything. We uh, yeah. wanted everything else. Just sell it. And uh, the thing is, though, I personally hate that experience because it reminds me of like the Goodwill, what is it? The, the like, bins. The bins where, you know, everyone's like mobbed and you're yeah. kind of fighting. So I went up to the a woman's, I guess the uh, room where all of her clothes were. Yeah. And she had like a bedroom, then like a room with a bathroom, then a room with all of her hanging clothes, and then a room for her shoes. Oh my God. And it was really kind of wow. amazing. It was like a... You know, a nice size, like walking uh, a closet with you know just rows and rows of shoes, and there were a lot of people in there. But I saw some good ones, like Kate Spade, and like, yeah, you know things that I know are good. And but there are no prices, oh, and so I like you know kind of get through the mob and try and find someone that uh, works there. I'm like, how much are things? How much are shoes? And she told me. It depends. And I'm like, mm, that is the well, worst. what does it depend, depend on? on what? You know, like, just bring give me you? a range. Is it like, you know, 5 to $20? Is it, is it like 10 to 100 And she's like, I don't know. I got to uh, see it. So I just like walked away because I'm like, I don't want to play that yeah, game. Yeah, you're like, how like, about these? How about these? How yeah, about these? and I had a feeling like they were still in the like. They didn't really know. We're selling things for, you know, a retail price. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I mean, so that's like. That kind of estate sale in an urban area. I know there's someone on the uh, forum that always says that we should like go into urban areas and like hit up estate sales because we have a, you know we uh, know what to buy. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. But you have to do it on Sunday, the final the day, last and day. you go like the last three hours when everything's discounted. When then your Instead of it being a seller's world, it's a buyer's world. Right. And they're willing to do deals and blah, blah, blah. Because they just got to move it out. Yeah. I mean, you do miss some of the good stuff because the good stuff goes first. But like you said, it's that hectic environment where if someone's buying a gorgeous, you know, mid-century painting and they're buying it for themselves, they're going to pay a lot of money. And you're like, well, I'm not going to pay that much. Well, that's why I like auctions rather than estate sales. I mean, I definitely know that there's, you know, like estate sale rats yeah estate sale <laughs> hounds i don't yeah. know like we're trash elves yeah. or like estate sale rats i mean yeah. where they like they're dealers and they're going to buy but estate sales do attract just like yeah all the uh, neighbors all the and neighbors just all the local people buying for, for themselves. themselves yeah exactly i like auctions because rarely there's it's like 80 percent dealers 20 percent just regular people yeah. and 20 percent might even be too much yeah just, Normal people don't really go to auctions. It's just a different because with an estate sale, you can go in any room, buy things at any time. Auctions, you just have to sit and wait till they get to the thing you want. You know, it's not you can't just pick anything up and buy it. And then oftentimes you have to buy the whole table. I think that's why I like auctions too, is because everyone gets a chance to buy the same exact Mm -hmm. thing. Instead of right. an estate sale like the one I went to, it's just like a madhouse. Just grabbing. People are just grabbing, and it's just, it gets overwhelming. And, and I hate feeling like I'm having to fight people because I can get into that mode, you know, like, get that to me. You know? <laughs> in an auction, there's a, a process where, you know, everyone gets to, it's a to process. bid, and it's whoever process. wants it the most gets it. It's a different it, you know? kind of competition. Yeah. It's, like, more structured. It's more civilized yeah. <laughs> in my mind. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I did, I, I did not buy anything there. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you know, buy stuff on eBay. Yeah. I buy stuff for us to use and for our rentals, but I also buy stuff to sell. Yeah. On eBay, too. Just a little bit. Like, just a little. Just, just like fun. keeping eyes right. out on certain things that I... And, you know, we noticed, we were talking about it earlier, that, you know, on eBay, there are the amateur people and there are the pros. Sellers. You know, like a lot of peer, people here in our podcast are... I, pros. I would say are pros. pros. Like they're doing it as a business, you yeah. know. And then there's like the amateurs where, you know, it's like, just sell stuff in your closet. Just selling you know? their own stuff. And so... 
amateurs are great to buy from. Like we always say, we love to buy from amateurs on eBay because there's the possibility to get an awesome deal. Because right. basically, they're using eBay as a yard sale. They just want to get their stuff out. But the problem is it can be a really bad experience because they don't tell you something's broken. They switch things out, you know, and, <sighs> and they don't think of it a big deal because they're like, oh, it's just, it's who just cares, whatever. It's know? just a junky yard sale item. Like, here's, here's two experiences. I bought this box of stuff from this lady and she said, so I bought it. I paid for it. She's getting ready to ship it. Oh, by the way, the stuff in the box might be different than the photos. <laughs> and also one of the things that was going to be in there um, is not. You should see my face right now. I'm like, and what? And so we didn't say anything. So I didn't say anything. I waited till I got it. And I was like, well, I want a partial refund. The, the, the majority of the stuff was fine. It looked like it was the stuff in the photos. I didn't really know what she was talking about there. But um, the thing that was missing, I was like, I actually want a partial refund for that because... That was part of the lot I was, you know, bidding on, basically. Um, and she did give me a partial yeah. refund and, for that. And, and so that's the kind of bad experience of it. The good experience it was, you know, it's someone that sold, like, a lot of stuff. And it was, like, free shipping. So it was, like, after she shipped it, it's like, I don't she know if she money. made $5. Yeah, so you're you know? just kind of like, but, you know, <laughs> when someone's an amateur like that, you're like, that's not my problem. Like, I'm trying to buy something and you're doing it incorrectly. The other thing was I bought a phone. I was wanting, we've been talking about upgrading our phones, and I and bought one. And she got envious I got of my envious. new iPhone 6. <laughs> no, you know what And happened? she was like, I don't need that. My iPhone 5 is just fine. And then I dropped my <laughs> iPhone 5 and the keyboard stopped working. So that kind of sucked. I was like, oh, maybe I should upgrade my phone since my keyboard is being it. wacky. Um, so that was stupid. But so I bought an iPhone 6 and um, the person said something very specific about how it worked and didn't disclose that the home button, which is the most important button, didn't work. So that kind of, I, I kind of got into a little uh, back and forth with them. Like, no, the home button doesn't work. And they're like, well, I didn't really say that, but I kind of meant that. Mm -mm, that's not how But it then works. we talked about it. That's actually when, you know, all these uh, rules that a lot of us get angry about with eBay. With eBay, yeah. Like, it seems so strict and stringent and, like, it's so buyer-focused. But that's a good example of, like, when it works. Like, right. we were not worried at, at all, all that I wouldn't get my because money back. We didn't need to actually talk to the person. Right. We we did I did talk to them. A but, bit. Yeah. But we could have just been return, eBay guarantee. Yeah. No problem. So what I did was I just opened a return case saying this item is broken because right. it is. Um and they were like, Well, it is, but it isn't and I was like yeah, I mean, look, I just need to return it because right. I can't, I, I can't use it in this state. It was back in the old days with eBay. You know what it was was it was just between well, there were you, no cases. It was you You're just writing messages and the person that sold. And if that person didn't like what was happening, they could drag it out and yell at you and blah blah blah. It was you just know. Sort of the, oh, leave you negative feedback yeah. as a buyer. Well, those are the really <laughs> old days. Like, yeah. You know, but, it was more like a Craigslist kind of thing. You know? So so I do have to say in this last week of these two experiences where I'm like, uh, people, what's going on here with you amateur sellers? Um, you know, I felt good about buying on eBay because I was like, here's a problem. It will be risk free. Yeah, it basically right. is. Yep. And so, you know, as a seller, I'm like, OK, I understand eBay's perspective on buyers, you know, it really is like Amazon where you're like, this came to me broken. Well, I mean, you know? because on eBay, there's no way to tell who is an amateur versus right. who's a pro. I mean, unless you're like, they have one listing, it's this phone, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but even that, but, I mean, when someone does, when someone buys on eBay, they're not buying from like a store. Right. They're just doing a search. They see a list of iPhones and then they just click one and they're like, they I want that. that. They don't know if that's, I mean, uh, I guess if you're a savvy buyer, you, you can, can look at the tell. feedback, and you. Can... But most people aren't gonna like. For me, I'm like, is this a, a well, seller or just a regular? Person? The reason why you bought that because it was cheap. It was and, a good price, and that was the the benefit of an amateur is that if you're like, I could possibly get something really a nice for cheap. Right, because they're just but trying to get it. Out. I'm gonna have to, you know, balance that. It's with it could be a bad experience, and it was, you know. Right. Kind of bad. They, they, 
and I told them too. Actually, I was like, "Look, someone will probably buy this phone again, but you really need and the, willing to fix the button because right. you can fix those buttons." I said, "You just have to say it because yeah. you're going to get another return." Yeah. Amateurs don't. I mean, we were amateurs once, and we learned that. Oh. Very- Quickly, so many times I made mistakes. If you say that there's a problem, people will still buy it, but then you've set the expectation that there's something wrong with it. Because look, I'm willing, like if I had gotten a really cheap price, right. I would have been like, yeah, I'll fix the button. Right. But I was like, no. And they were like, oh, I could do a partial refund. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to fix the button. I just want one that works. Like I, at this point in time, I don't have time. Yeah. So, And, and you yeah. know, and, and then buying from a... A pro on eBay, yeah, means you'll uh, most likely you'll most uh, you'll probably get a good experience, right? Not always, but but for the uh, most part. But the thing is, you're always going to probably pay a market price for it. Yeah, you know? you're like, going to pay like there's no discount. There's you know, no, they might do make offer take offers. You know, sometimes, there's no but there's not. It's not like you yeah. know some yard sale prices. Okay, we have some things, some kind of things we've been talking about with eBay. Uh, we'll kind of whiz through here. Uh, eBay templates. We had said, oh, I really wish eBay had templates. And what we mean by templates. Is not like the HTML template in the description. We mean like, here's a shirt listing. Yeah. It will always be, you right. know, this. I sell shirts all the time. Right. Allow me to have a, you know, a, a pre, men's dress shirt. Yeah, a pre-filled in everything. Right. It's with the shirt, so I can just type in the title. And everyone says they do. They did. And you know what's so crazy though? I'm like. I feel like these templates were implemented when they started the new, like, seller hub look. I just never saw it. I never saw okay. any documentation about it. So my question is, is it the template that we're trying to find? Like, does it work for what you So want? here's the thing. The cool thing about a template is, like, say for hats, like men's baseball hats, we do list those a lot. So I'm like, cool, I can make a template. The only issue that I see is you can't be, like... Make 20 listings with this template. Right. What you can do, which is a workaround, is you can say, okay, I want to uh, make a listing with this template. And then I can say, make 10 copies of this. Similar. Okay, so... No, it's not sell similar. It's make copies. It's make copies, which okay. I also didn't realize existed. Right. But so I'm like, th- why do I have to do two parts? Just say, make 10 of this right. template. The, uh, make... That that's a new thing to the be copies, able to uh, right. uh, make a copy, right. or which new-ish. is cool. So, so it's, so it's weird. If anyone from eBay is hearing this, we like yeah. the template, but put the uh, make copy on the template. Right. So, make ten of these right. is what I want, right. um, because you're kind of so in the drafts section. I know you don't know this. Um, you can say create a single listing. Or create multiple listings. Right. So what I want is create multiple listings from a template. Okay, second part of this. Templates are cool. I'm so psyched. I'm like, that's awesome. So if my helpers need to do it. But so, I also don't want to show them so two steps. why don't we just imagine there's an imaginary eBay person who is hearing this. Yes. Who might actually care. Yes. Why do you want to make 10 copies of a template? Because we have a helper and right. the way we do it is... Where we put out like 10 or, you know, a bunch of items. A box of hats. And we're like, and we give her all the templates so right. she can then go in and fill right. it out. So she's not having to manually go and make, make a t- listing. Yeah, you know. exactly. Right. So there's that. But the other thing too is a lot of times with our helpers or with our own stuff, it's not a box of 10 hats. It's a box of like the most random right. things on earth. So in that respect, you're like, I well, can't have templates for like right. So, all those but things. I mean, in that case, a template won't work. Won't I mean, work. you know, but exactly. it does a work when we, you know, do a bunch of pants, a bunch right. of shirts. I mean, we do that all the time. Exactly. You know? But exactly. it won't help if we just have random hard goods. Exactly. You know? So you know, those are the two things okay. for us. We also, I was also like, okay, eBay, here's a free tip: have eBay.com/status, right. so that way. Anyone who wants to know if there's a problem with eBay, they just go there, and it is a list of known problems. Right. It's a bug tracker, you know? Right. And, and someone was like... And someone says, it exists. Okay. Now, it's ebay.com slash STS, um, but when you click on it, 
It's not very detailed like you're talking about. Oh, I mean, it. all it is is it shows, like, the different kind of, like, categories, like eBay, uh, I don't know. Hold on, let me click on it. And all it has is a red and green uh, next to each okay. of those functions. Current system status. All services in good health. Bidding, checkout, shipping label printing, buy it now, listing, homepage, registration, billing, image services. Right. So, so but so <clears throat> on that day when images were disappearing, was that image services saying service outage? Probably not. Right. I mean, it's either red or green. So the images were uh, working, right. but not 100%. So what I'm saying is I want to see status... But then have it broken down. So I guess yeah. I guess that you could have red or green at the very top, but inside of that, with like eBay, a photo upload, there should be then it should be able to a breakdown like if, where it tells you yeah. we know that there's X problem right. and we're working on it. You know. So anyway. So it's not you know we saw that and we we're like oh my god they have it oh it's not exactly what we were talking about yeah. but yeah it's like down detector. Like, you want down detector right. levels where you're like... Well, down detector is just up or down. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is, you know, it's like you want it to be like, you know, image services are down in this respect. Like, it's a report. Yeah, I really want it to be a bug tracker. Right. You know, bug anyone tracker. that has a worked on websites. So, so basically what you're saying is we need ebay.com slash bug. <laughs> Not yeah. slash status. I guess so, sure. Yeah. I guess I was trying to be more positive instead of like ebay.com slash, slash problem. problem. <laughs> like, just be status. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, okay. Photo issue, the one that, you know, kind of plagued eBay where yeah. your items would get re listed, but all photos. the photos would. So it seems like that problem isn't happening anymore. So they fix that. Like it's not deleting your photos, yes. But. Any photos that were gone, uh, it seems very a nebulous. I don't think eBay... As, as to if they're going to fix it. I That's mean, the question. I heard eBay was kind of helping some people, but it sounded like you yeah. were kind of on your own. And they started refunding people's store fees for last month because people were like... But that was interesting. I'm going to be interested wow. to see how, how, how much of that they do, especially as people start hearing about it. It's like, you know, it's we're telling people right now... Can if you just call and be like, I'm so upset, and then yeah. they're like, okay, here's 30 bucks, you know? 30 bucks? I mean, store fees for a month can be a lot more than well, that. Well, right. I mean... I did notice one of our listings was affected, actually. Mm. We sold this, like, Ikea item overnight, and I went to go look at the photos to be like, I gotta go pull this out of storage, and it only had one photo. And it's still sold. But it's still sold! Wow. I was like, okay, well, yeah, okay. we should double... We should uh, see if there's any uh, more that don't have photos. Yeah, I know. I guess I should look. Oh, okay, and the uh, last thing about eBay, which is interesting, our man Dan in Australia. Yeah. Our man down under. Yes. He uh, messaged us and said that eBay is now starting a uh, like a kind of it's like an eBay FBA, like, like a like fulfillment a, center. Yep, a fulfillment in center. Australia only for Australia sellers. Right. You know, Australia FBA sellers. is fulfilled by Amazon, but this would be, I guess, ful fulfilled by eBay. You know, that idea where you, as a seller, you put a, up a bunch of stuff on eBay, right, and then if you ship that stuff to a warehouse, right, and then when it sells, that warehouse takes care of everything. I wonder what the fees are on that. I don't know, but I will put a link, or we will put a link on the blog so people can check it out. Uh, it's Australia only, and he was telling me that Amazon just started in Australia this past 12 uh, months. So, Amazon just started. Right. Period. Like FBA. Oh, like, FBA. Yeah. So where Amazon they, does exist in, in Australia, right. though, right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I know, didn't know. on the internet but they just started they have one a warehouse in australia mm. so that way i guess people get things uh, faster so i right. guess ebay sees like this is their opportunity they could maybe keep amazon from taking over because it's so new over there. right and it's such a smaller amount yeah. of population I, I doubt they would ever do it in america it would just i doubt so... ebay would do because but... they don't need to why do they they don't need mm. to everybody just stores their own stuff yeah but I don't. But know. I guess you yeah. know the advantage of an eBay fulfillment center like Amazon for the commodity sellers, not so much for us, 
is faster shipping. Yeah. It's like some of these commodity sellers wait a week to ship yeah, stuff. You're right. And you're just like, <laughs> and trust me, like if you're trying to buy weird little electronic things from China, yeah, it takes a month. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. I don't. I don't know totally what the advantage would be there, other than they would like make money on fees and stuff. But yeah, and can guarantee shipping faster, so maybe people want to use eBay. I mean, I'm all about stealing ideas. You know, like if something really? works. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if something works, appropriating. Just, like you know, go for it. You know, I just, I just hope eBay kind of comes up with things that are specific that works for eBay. You know, eBay is nice because it's a distributed. Uh, yeah. network yeah. of of sellers right there must be good ideas that would work better than that than just trying to go and copy Amazon. well what's funny is it's it's a distributed network which is its advantage but is also its disadvantage like we were saying where right. sellers wait a week to ship right sellers send you something that's broken right. you're like okay yeah. but you got a better price you know okay our ebay store this week the numbers the numbers tell the truth. Can we pay our bills? Let me see. Can we? Will yes, we the can. police come and arrest us? <laughs> what? For not becoming part of the capitalist society. Okay. okay. We, <laughs> we sold 34 items for $1,300. Uh, we bad. always need a thousand bucks. Like, yeah. that's our goal. So we may, you know, we're... This has really been, yeah, soft sales, slow. You know, this is summertime. But, you know, thank God we have our... Expenses are low enough where yeah. we can a weather and even thrive during right. the summertime. I mean, during the holiday a season, you know, and we need a thousand dollars in a week, and we often make like three thousand. Right. So that's when like whew, it's like great. Oh my god! The second in our second store, store Ryan. I mean, just <laughs> this is to you. I know. I know. Our it's second like... store, we sold. Three items for fifty six dollars. Fifty seven dollars. Okay. Uh, well, look, I I have I have Inkfrog turned on and I have the instructions on how to move listings. So <laughs> clearly, I need to do that. Oh my god! And now this is the the second store is a store where we have not uh, listed an item in that second store in like Over almost year. three years. No, 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 not three years. No, no, no four not three years. Because our our Five Our helper had years. listed some things last year, so it okay. has been over a year. Got it. It's been like a year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. Still, uh, I guess it really shows the slow summer sales on yeah. that store <laughs> for sure. Okay, things we sold. We don't really have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of bread and butter stuff. You know, our average price sold it was about thirty eight bucks. So, the one big thing was a, a sheet, Ooh. a single flat sheet. Flat queen, sheet. Queen size flat sheet. $200. So for $200. What? Yeah, what? Big question mark. When it sold, it, okay, here's the, the premise. It's a Ralph Lauren, brand new in the, in the... Who's that? Who's Ralph Lauren anyway? So a lot of people collect his linens, and there's like an entire website devoted to every pattern. I Because I hear he hand makes it, right? Yeah, he hand dyes every... Every piece of thread Personally. that goes into the cotton. <laughs> so anyway, there's whatever. There's collectors. Uh, so when it sold, I was like, first of all, I was like, what? Why did I have this priced at one ninety nine? Research. And I said, this is just a flat sheet. It's, it's not, not a sheet set. Right. A sheet set, I could understand two hundred. A flat sheet, but. I researched it and I was yep. like, these Ralph Lauren sheet sets from like the nineties where there's no none of these patterns. And they sell for a, a lot of money. In package, new in the package. Yep. Just got it. So I was like, you know what? Store. I'm putting two hundred dollars. If someone says they want it cheaper, I'll probably say yeah. That's where you I mean, I think that it you shine in many ways, but as part of this business, that's it you've really made this uh, it's business so we can just go out and find stuff and just really good at researching and putting these really strong prices on things and we get them you know I guess just I don't think I would ever be <laughs> bold enough to do that you know I guess look it's all about looking at solds and just being like do people pay this much for this thing do you think you know, do they pay something close to this? Do you think they would? Yes. Okay, I'm going to try. Especially, especially if we know we have time. 
Right. Like, this does not need to sell in a week. I bet that thing's been up for how long? A year? Over a year. Yeah. So, a couple of things I noted. Out of the 34 items we sold, 11 items we sold had zero uh, watchers on it. You know, right. so I just always like to bring that up because, yeah. you know, a new people come on and they're like, what kind of stats do I need to look at? Like, what will eBay tell me to know I'm doing a good job? And to me, the eBay stats are almost non, Not, yeah. I don't even right. check them out. Right. Like how many people have watched it and users. Because views. they found that uh, at that moment and bought it. Right. They didn't need to watch it for six months. And out of those 34 items, eight of them, just by me eyeballing them, yeah. were at least 24 uh, months old. You right. know, that had like been you on could the just store tell, for oh, two I years. remember that, it's, yeah. We take pictures in different places, just where we get bored of one place, and we're like, I'm And you're like, oh, here. that was a while ago. So man. by where we take pictures, I kind of know the general era of our store. Right, right. Well, and just remembering the item, too, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, I've, I've... For me, I remember stuff because I've seen it in storage right. for so long. I'm like, I've seen that for so long, you know? So, yeah, we were talking about that over the week on the a forum just about a list it and forget it. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it stresses some people out to have things be in their store for too long. But I'm just like, man, that stuff sells. does like, not stress me out. I, I would have never have known when that flat sheet was going to sell. We had to wait for the person who, who was like fancy person with a lot of cash and her dog peed on her <laughs> sheet in the guest room and she's and like she's I like know. i need a sheet to match all my other sheets they don't make it anymore here it is it's 200 dollars. i don't care this is the only one in the world i'm gonna literally buy. the only one available we could have charged 500 dollars <laughs> <laughs> and waited two more years yeah okay scavenge of the week it was bread and butter stuff it was bread and butter. That's why I can't remember. I can never remember. Yeah, bread and butter clothes. Yep. We've been buying a yeah. lot of clothes lately just because it's mainly been just going to uh, thrift stores. We're going to an auction. Can I announce that? Yeah. Okay. Can I I'm say, going with you. Can I say why? Yes, you can say why. Because uh, we went out to our warehouse. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, okay, let's grab some stuff for our helper to, to take pictures. And, there's and no I'm like, stuff. Ryan, there is nothing on these shelves. <laughs> Like, this last box I'm getting is Is it. the last box. Like, uh, you know. Yeah. For us, you know, you we do go to a thrift stores, and mainly it's a lot of clothes. It's like yeah. 80 to 90% clothes and shoes and right. hats. Right, And like 10% hard goods. Right. And that, you know, can come, that can become a tough grind, and, you know, we're always a wary of a store with too many clothes because it just becomes That's not all we want to do, yeah. But if we go to an auction and we can get a truckload of stuff, yeah, that will, we can eat on that for like a month, you know? A while, yeah. yeah exactly. So we're going to go and it's going to be exciting. Yeah, it should be fun. It's going to be real fun. Yeah. Ryan's going to have her Sharpie, her like roll of tape. Yes, I know. I have to bring those things. Uh, my snacks, your snacks, coffee thermos, right. your must have meals, must have, yep. or else I'm like, I want to leave. <laughs> I'm tired and hungry. It's like, no, eat your food, drink That's your right. coffee, and shut up. I'm not. I'm not That's not. what I'm saying it to myself. Good. I'm Good. saying it. To myself. I would get in trouble <laughs> if I said that. But yeah. I'm saying it to myself. And you know, our goal is always like we we've never actually done it. In a long, it's been a long time since we've stayed for the entire auction. Oh, it's really tough. Till it even ends, because in the old days we would stay the whole time. And when it ends, people are like Just give stuff away. getting their stuff, and they're leaving behind a lot of things yeah. they don't want. And we're like, can we have it? They're like, of course. And we're like getting like double the inventory, which is amazing. Re- remember that one time when that guy and his mom bought that one table? Yep. And they, like, grabbed, like, two things off the table. Yep. And he was like, take it. Take the rest. There was so much stuff on there. And, and it was so funny because we were bidding against him for that table for right. the stuff we wanted that he didn't want. Right. And it was so great because then we just got it for free. It was, he, and actually, we gave them some stuff before, too. So we were kind of, like, right. you know, exchanging stuff. But it it was really funny. I'm like, oh, that's the stuff so I was bidding let's on. let's just think about that. Like, if we can hold out. Yeah. Okay, customer issues. I mean, this week we had three returns. returns. Every single one of them blamed us. They said we did something wrong. Uh, one of them was 
it didn't fit, but yeah, for a laptop case. Okay. Uh, so that was okay, but... But the other two, you know, so one of them was definitely, it was just like a piece of clothing. They didn't uh, like it and they returned it, but they said we did something Item wrong. not as described. Too worn. More worn than described. And that's even with us having free returns. Like, they could just return it for free. For free. free. Anyway, say they didn't like it. The only, People but, but if they blame us, then they don't have to pay to have it shipped to them. So, right. uh, are you going to call about that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, but that's just the way it is. You know, the more, I feel like we're in that mode where we're selling a lot of clothes right now. And yeah. just clothing just always has, for us at More least, returns. More returns. Okay. Things we learned in the forum. One thing that was interesting, indie sales. This said, is a seller. Yep. They said... You know how we all have a, a buyer that like buys an item and then they immediately write and be like, I didn't do that. My account got hacked or, you know, yeah, I, this I is a mistake. I didn't buy this item. And you're like, how is Cancel that possible? It. And, you know, it, it, you're like, how is that possible? Well, he said he and I think it's a he. Yep. He actually did that. He bought something he by saw, accident. He was like out of his house and his phone buzzed and he looked and it was like an item's being shipped you to just you bought or, this or, thing and you just paid for this yeah. item and he's like i didn't do that so we were i was like really kind of pestering him because i'm like okay how does this really happen it sounded like a pocket buy he was at a ham a radio convention, convention. yeah super nerdy yeah so nerdy which is cool and he said he had been searching on ebay for, for like ham, ham radio, radio parts, parts. Right. And the part that got bought, it it wasn't one that he had searched for. Right. But it was a ham radio part. So So to me, he searched, he put the phone in his pocket and he it must not have like turned, turned his phone off, off all the way. And somehow his pocket clicked on a link in that search or something. And he signed in and his PayPal must be signed in and And then he bought it. Because <clears throat> my argument has always been like it takes a few clicks to do it, but you know maybe that. But so we don't can actually happen. buy stuff on the phone, right? Yeah, I, I'm always you know I buy stuff on the computer, so I don't really know what the experience is. Which sounds crazy. You're like you should know what the experience is like, but I just like to search on the computer better. I well, like I think it's if it's just experience. pushing, as long as you, you don't have to type anything in, like type in a code or whatever. Like if you're logged in, yeah, from PayPal and eBay. You know, it should just be click, 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 click. click. I mean, and I guess that can happen in your pocket. Yeah. I mean, what would have been weird is if he was saying it it bought a random, uh, you know, yeah. glass Holly vase. Hobby. <laughs> Holly Hobby. Holly Hobby t-shirt. Yep. <laughs> but I was at a ham radio convention searching for that. You're like, that would be really weird. Yeah. But it was very, like... You know, in line with what he was doing for the day, so it pocket buy something. Okay, so what did you cook? Oh man! Oh, th this is what I did. I I'm really into grilling eggplant, and you made fun of me because you're like it's really hard to do, and you're gonna well, look, burn real it. Real quick, I mean, we don't have. Okay, so I traditionally have been doing the the, the grilling, the grilling, because uh, yes. I guess that's what men do. Although <laughs> I I have no. Hold over it. And I was like, and she, she's like, I think that you overcook cook things too dark or, you know, yeah, it's too like, blackened. I'm like, all right, go for it, you know. And it's really hard. And it's it's like, it's a lot. Like, there's a lot going on the I grill. Know. It's like a little orchestra. Yeah, it is really hard. Um, So I... But you did a good job. I did. I think I did good. You didn't eat any. Well, you had some of my hamburgers. But the second time around where I was like, I'm really going to master this, you know, I'm out there. I'm like cooking. And we ran out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't get to finish that part. Yeah, that sucked. Uh, so that was my cooking experience. Cool. Yeah, grilled eggplant. Yep. I ate it all. It's yep. all gone. Wow. Like, I think I, I ate three it. eggplants. There's nothing more exciting to me when we eat the food in our fridge. Yeah. I good. do not. I'm the gatekeeper. We do not. I'm not. I do not allow having a fridge mm. of those, like, Any a mystery. Any there's like a mystery things in there that have been in there for a long time. I bring everything to the front. I know. And I'll be like, Ryan, are you going to eat It's this? so... Yes or no? So yes or no. annoying not, sometimes. Let's just get rid of it. Let's not feel like guilty. you'll see something in there for a little bit too long and you're like, are you going to... No, I'm not. Okay? <laughs> just 
do something with it. <laughs> just fine. Just okay. Compost it. It's all good. You know, <laughs> the, uh, worms will eat it. It's no problem. Yep. Clean fridges. Yes. Okay. So we're going to an auction this week. Yep. Yeah. And so that's going to be our big week. And yeah. Then, uh, we own a building. We, and um, hopefully we don't fill that building up temporarily with stuff from the auction. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But we could. I know. Ooh. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, no. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So let's answer Questions. calls. So the voicemail line is 540-407-8486. You have three minutes to leave a message, or you can email us a file, which sounds so much better. Hi, Ryan and Jay. This is Andrea in Arizona, and my partner and I have been selling on Etsy and eBay for about three years now. We sell vintage clothing, and thanks to you guys, your show, and the community, we've been able to avoid a lot of the common mistakes that newbies make. So thank you for all the information that you share and help share. Uh, we wanted to ask about a situation that happened to us tonight that we've never come across. So we this evening, we were just hanging out at home and we suddenly received six different best offers all from the same eBay user. Six different articles of clothing, six different best offers. So we went ahead and first got really excited. And then we accepted the offers that we considered to be good offers. And we countered the ones that were low. We also sent the user a message just to see, you know, just to say, hey, thanks for your interest. Uh, we'll be doing some traveling. So if you could accept these offers and pay as soon as possible, we'll get these things shipped out to you. Um, the user never responded to that message, which we sent mainly just to see how they would reply and try and get a feel for if they were scammers or just a regular person making offers. Uh, so they never replied to that message, but about a half hour later, they did end up accepting and paying for uh, basically five of the six offers. And so when we went in to, to look at the shipping details and to, to see about printing the shipping labels, we noticed that this user has three different PayPal addresses, three different P.O. boxes, all in the state of Georgia, but three different cities, which to me seemed to be a bit of a red flag. I know that you can have different addresses in PayPal, but I've never come across it. And I've never come across it in this situation where the person made multiple best offers. So... I wanted to call in and see if you guys had come across something like this or maybe somebody in the community could weigh in. We technically have until Tuesday to ship, so we have some time and we decided better to be safe than sorry. Uh, his feedback, he has more feedback than we do and it's all positive. His profile looks normal, so all that looks good. We're just a little thrown by the multiple best offers, by the multiple PayPal addresses. And I guess the fact that he bought, uh, you know, the, the articles of clothing that he bought are all different sizes and different styles. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, would appreciate uh, any information you guys can give. And thanks for such an entertaining and informative show. We're big fans and we're happy to be a part of the Trash Elf community. Thank you. The only When I first listened to this message, I thought... Maybe that person is one of those international shippers. Uh, that was the only thing but, I could think but of. But that PO be, boxes is but weird. That probably wouldn't be. I guess it could be in Georgia because you know, Hart, yeah. was it Hartsfield is like yeah, it's, it's one right. of the biggest airports. But also, it it'd be weird if it were going to PO boxes because most of the time it's like a warehouse. But bottom line is this: I think the answer is much easier. You know, it's always interesting trying to figure that stuff out. But honestly, it does not matter. This is when eBay right. comes into play, the seller protection. Right. Someone bought something from you. It's confirmed. It's confirmed in PayPal. It's paid. They give you a shipping address. Ship you, to that a, address. A ship it there. If something goes wrong, you are protected. You're like, period. I ship to their address. Right. There is no... You know, if they have... Oh, uh, you know, like, okay, so in the... W shipping label area do they have the same address there or is it you know four I mean, different addresses you know i mean so honestly i wouldn't really think about it and just do it and just do a yeah. dance because it you sold five things that's right. awesome i mean if you wanted to you, you could uh, message the buyer i mean if they're a normal yeah, you're like, What's human being and you can just be like hey i'm just i'm glad you bought but i'm just uh, wondering why am i uh, shipping to three 
addresses, you know? Yeah. And they may answer you and maybe not, you know? Right, exactly. Maybe they moved a bunch. But, I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know. Congra- yeah, I know. I hear con- you. Congratulations. I love sales like that. Yeah. Hello, guys. This is Mark um, from Connecticut, part time eBay and Amazon seller of mostly hardline goods. I've called uh, numerous times over the past few years. In fact, just a few weeks ago, someone in responding to my call about low priced items and tracking numbers, um, specifically postcards, called in and said you can buy. 500 um, generic tracking numbers from from a site and he followed up or you guys followed up saying that was not true and that those would not be applicable to the ebay website or count for tracking and um so that was a false hope um when you guys responded to my call afterwards you said you know oh we we don't give things away and, and and so forth i think i was slightly misunderstood um what ends up happening is i fall in love with things and i think oh i could definitely get 59 or 79 for that item and after nine months or uh you know two years it's at 19 or 14 and quite frankly i don't know what to do with it and i just have that stubbornness where i don't want to donate it to um a local thrift store after bidding on it at auction so i'm just trying to get most of my money back And that really hit home this week when I looked at my store as like an outsider clicking on it. And it's by price. And I would have to say what I found out is half of my items are, I don't know, under 20 bucks or under 22 bucks. And that really hit home because I'm a YouTuber also. And in my YouTube videos, I give constructive criticism to people that I admire um, in themselves and say, oh, you know, bread and butter doesn't work. You can't really take an item that you're really into for even two or three dollars and sell for 18 after fees and paypal and shipping materials and if you goof up on shipping by 80 cents and your time to photograph you're not really making any money and i referred to um craigslist hunters video that was released that week where he indicated you know go big or go home buy the higher priced items so The purpose for my call today is in light of what I said about the fact that I'm sitting on hundreds of antique postcards in good condition. We're talking like 1905, 1909 from all over the world. Um, Is it worth it just to swear off my top rated status seller, um, top rated seller status and just go rogue and uh, be able to sell these for at least what, two or two dollars, two or two fifty cheaper because I'll be able to ship them with a stamp instead of tracking And that might apply to some of the other stuff I have as well, Um, patches and and things like that. So I was wondering what your opinion was on that. And I I could kind of tell you guys were debating that right now, too. As far as I work full time, sometimes I bust my you know what to get something out with handling time. And I end up either being for late or missing something else. Um, I think my last question involved um with the amount you would lose for shipping discount and the way you described it a week or so ago that top rated plus applies to the item but type rated seller applies to your yourself if you could explain that and maybe discuss where i'm at with these hundreds of postcards that if i sell in a lot i'm going to get squat for them but if i list individually somebody might fall in love with one and pay maybe 15 for one whereas they would have paid 15 for 10 so i'm kind of i don't want to lose thanks guys thanks for answering my question in advance so yeah mark has been on the forum and has been part of the podcast for a long time now uh he posts a lot of his numbers and i've kind of seen his store grow over time he does work full time from it's what i see and yeah he's got a good uh store and he you know thinks about it well i mean the thing about look like if you look at what sold in our store this week it was bread and butter low dollar clothes and so it's kind of like for me i just need a diversity of that stuff well plus i sold a 200 hundred dollar item and so if i didn't have that 200 hundred dollar item in there I I got to be able to have both of those things. I think the issue is it's like I don't think anyone 
says, I want to store only of low dollar items. Like that's the only thing I'm going to sell on purpose. I mean, maybe people that sell only postcards or something. It's just that when we go out scavenging and we get a bunch of stuff because we just bought a table of goods at an, you know, at an auction. Yeah. We're, we're buying the table because there's some really cool items on there that we can sell for a lot. And then it comes it's with a bunch of other stuff. And I can sell that stuff too. And we can either be like, oh, I just donate it. Or we're like, these are like a bunch of $20 items. Let's go for it. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think Craigslist Hunter, I think that's cool if he's only focusing on high dollar items. But as I said before, if we wanted a store of only high dollar items... We would have to spend so much more time scavenging. Yeah. You know, like we're going to go to an auction, get a truckload of stuff. Yeah. Probably spend five to $800. Right. Come home. There's so many items we're going to sell off of that. There's going to be some high dollars, there's going to be some $20 items, and that's just how it is. If we only wanted to find things that were worth $200, I would have to go to four or five auctions a week. Yeah. And only buy probably five to ten high dollar items at every single auction yep. and have a lot more of money invested and you know right um, i would love to see does craigslist hunter share his ebay store i'd love to see like you know if what, he only he sells selling? i mean i remember when i when i talked about this and people sent me this this ebay this guy who sells an ebay he's in connecticut or something and so he's actually like a uh what do you call it? Like a consignment. Yeah. So people bring him right. fancy artwork yep, and pottery. I that. And a lot of that will sell for $300 or, or more. But he's not having to go look for but it. But that's such it's a consignment. And he doesn't get to keep all of that right. uh, money. He that gets money. whatever. A percentage. 25% per percent right. off of that. So he's actually not actually uh, making $300 an item. Right. So that's a different thing. I would love if someone knows of an eBay store where someone is actually scavenging themselves items that sell for $300 or more. And that's mainly it's right. the things they sell. I mean, that's awesome. But then it's again... It's really hard to do. It's just... That just becomes what you're going to, to do is scavenging all the time. Which some people do. Right. But we don't. Right. So we have other stuff we have to do. So when we can fit in scavenging like last week and we we're like, okay, cool, cool yeah. vintage clothes. Love it. Get it. Yep. You know, and that's what those... I could do this week. Yeah. Uh, in terms of top rated seller status because of selling lots of postcards and not having tracking. Yeah. I so mean, that's you're... just up to you. Right. I right. mean, keeping that so status. Your items. So from what I understand is your items that fall under all the, you know, jump over all the barriers that eBay hands you. Those will be top rated seller plus, and you'll get the twenty percent right. discount on the final value fee. But 10%, your postcard, 10%, sorry, ten percent. Your postcards, uh, because you're not going to have a way to follow that item, right? Will not be top rated seller plus, so you're not right. going to get the ten percent off. But if you're just selling postcards for five dollars, you know your yeah. your your ten percent final value fee is just pennies, so right. it doesn't matter anyway. But then being able to keep your seller status overall if you're selling a lot of postcards yeah. and not having tracking. I don't know. A lot hoops. of people on the uh, forums have been kind of being like, you know what? It's not worth it. I think I'm yeah. done. You know, yeah. eBay has Oops. made it harder to get that status yeah. and has a, that has a lowered the amount of a reward for yep. jumping through those hoops. And so it's not- a lot of people are... In terms of like a lot of people who just do this part time, they're like, I can't do one day or same day handling. Like, I just can't do it. Or so or I'm not going to jump through the hoops anymore. And people are like, it's great. It's I, great. Two day handling. I d- love it. I ship every three days. It's great. I know. So. Which isn't honestly like that's not as bad as you know people who are like I ship once every two weeks. And, you know, like you've read those. <laughs> yeah. You know, every two, three days, that that's really not that bad, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think most people are very <laughs> accepting of that. Yeah. Hey, Jane Ryan. This is Brian from Illinois. Just calling in to make a comment. I, uh, a couple of years ago, I joined this eBay Expressions program that eBay has. And uh, basically, it's just they send you an email, and they ask you to take a survey. It's usually a quick survey about whatever. Well, I got one recently 
and it was all about the new eBay payment policy, uh, payment processing features where they'll do things other than just PayPal. And uh, they asked, they said that it, was, it, it will start to roll out for a few sellers in September, and that they asked if, if initially, if PayPal was not an option for payment, would I be more or less likely to participate? And uh, the questions went on to ask if they dangled several, several carrots in front of me, like, well, if if we reduced your eBay selling fees, would you be more inclined to join without PayPal? Or if we reduced your shipping fees, would we? So there were several questions like that, and uh, so I answered it, and I don't know. They they asked if they could contact me again, you know, for more details. So maybe maybe I'll get the option to join the program as an early adopter. I don't know, but uh, it sounds like it's going to start in September. Thanks. That's really good info. I mean, Interesting. I, I like when people uh, share these kind of experiences. Yeah. Right. I mean, supposedly when they did the big announcement that they were going to start r- rolling stuff out in 2018. Yeah. And then I think it's going to all get officially switched over in 2021. 20? 21. So, I don't know. So, it's a long way, but years. You know. But what's interesting to me is, is eBay going to be like, it's this new a system or a nothing? Like, no um, more PayPal at all. Like, that's or what's will PayPal be an option? I mean, it's so crazy because if you think about it, I mean, it's all PayPal, really, Well, right I mean, now. I so. mean, and that was eBay's choice. Right, exactly. So, it's just, PayPal. it's a little bit. I just, I mean, I'm hoping that they're smart enough to where I'll put on another payment option. Yeah, why not? Like, pay with a credit card, pay with PayPal, pay with... What is it called? I don't know what this it's, thing's it's called. called something yeah, else. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Pay with Bitcoin. I mean... Yeah. yeah. Like, oh! No they one, should definitely allow no that. No one buys it. Yeah. No one buys anything with Bitcoin. People just hoard it. They buy the future. Or they just buy drugs. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so I, but it's going to be interesting. I, I would hope that what eBay is not trying to do is like cut PayPal out without, because it's, because right. it's really on eBay to, to get buyers to buy into this new uh, system. People have right. to like sign up for a new account. They have to attach their bank account. I mean, it's like a whole other thing. It's like a lot of hoops. And, it's like, everybody's like, well, I already have PayPal. Why would I do that? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. And and, uh, and and honestly, the only reason, and this to me is what's kind of uh, frustrating, is that this is this benefits really only eBay. Right. I don't really see how it affects us. Yeah. Because PayPal works fine. Their eBay is just trying to get a piece of the action. You know, again We're after they separate, paying three point five percent to PayPal on every right. purchase. If eBay has their own transaction they'll get that 3.5 yeah, they, want, they want it back so really it's like ebay just please yeah like i know you need money and you want money and all yeah that, and i get that but like don't blow things up just because of like that hey guys i'm gene i live on the sunshine coast in australia um been listening to your podcast for around three months anyway i've got something i thought i would share about the um australian ebay landscape so a couple of days ago, eBay announced to Australian sellers that they've partnered with the business called Fulfilio. Um, there's a few news articles that are painting it as a competition to Amazon. Basically, how it works is you send your inventory to a warehouse somewhere in Australia, and they post your items as they sell. They're getting everyone's interests by offering very cheap rates for postage, but they aren't giving out much information so it seems a bit shady at the moment. Anyway, thought I'd let you know as a lot of Aussie resellers starting to talk about it and share their thoughts. Big thanks to you guys. You've given me the confidence to take my reselling to the next level. All the best. See ya. I think that that's really interesting. And I love, I don't know if you sell the kind of items that would work in that a system but i'd love to hear someone actually try that like i mean once they get people you know yeah send it in using it i would love to hear yeah what's the process i mean and will they take like all the random things that you find on gumtree and uh 
gum tree and and all those sites or yeah, right. um you know just scavenge items or will they only accept people that are buying like new commodity items, items yeah. or with upcs or right whatever. And, and all that like brand a uh, new items it'll so. be interesting i mean it, just because they have it in australia does not mean it's going to happen in the united states but it's interesting that ebay thinks it's important enough to do it over there well also it sounded like and i could be wrong it seems like they are not doing it themselves that it's kind of like with oh, the global a shipping program where you know with them they like hired it out to pitney, pitney bows. bows yeah so it sounds like with this he mentioned some company that they're fulfilio or something yeah <laughs> fulfilio <laughs> Yeah. So that's that's interesting, you know. You never know. Okay, that's it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. Again, you can call and leave a question or a comment on the voicemail line. That phone number is 540-407-8486. And clearly, you can call from anywhere in the world. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you'll always get the latest episode. If you want to rent our vacation rentals this summer, we still have some openings here and there on weekdays. We do give scavenger discounts. We live in a beautiful part of the country. There's a link on the sidebar that says Our Rentals. We are ending this podcast in three, three two, two, one. one.